Healing Emotional Eating, Episode 36. Up and down a sliding scale, wonder if it's ever gonna end. Food has always held me hostage, I just want to feel healthy again. And thanks to my new friend, Jen, it's helping show me the way. To deal with stress while I'm taking off the weight Learning to love myself Janet's here to help She's just a click away Go to JanetDThomas.com And stay on your journey today Welcome to Healing Emotional Eating The Missing Link to Sustainable Weight Loss I'm your host, Janet D. Thomas According to the Council on Size and Weight Discrimination at CSWD.org, 95% of diets fail and most will regain their lost weight in one to five years. With my decades of experience with comfort eating, emotional eating, binge eating, sneak eating, and yo-yo dieting, I know only too well what being in that 95% is all about. And I finally came to understand that my incessant yo-yo dieting made total sense because eating was my number one source of comfort. It was only a matter of time before my diet would go right out of the window and I would make a beeline for my favorite comfort foods once again. So if you're like me and rely on eating for comfort, or if food is your best friend when you feel troubled or worried, Losing weight and keeping it off is not as simple as eating less and getting some exercise. So in this podcast, we're going deeper. We're bypassing the discussions about diets because Lord knows there are already plenty of resources for us in that area. Plus, chances are, like me, you're already a professional when it comes to dieting. Okay, So you know that moment when you're feeling something and you're agitated or unsettled and you can't quite put your finger on why? And the only thing you can think about is tuning out in front of the TV while eating those chips or cookies to help you feel better? That split second when everything feels yucky and all you want is comfort? Now I love love, love exploring that moment. And that's what we're doing in this podcast. We're taking a look and learning how to make a different choice when we face those moments. And seriously, though, for now, thank goodness for eating for that, you know, because we aren't taught how to work through those tough spots. We may not know how to deal with those challenging emotions except to eat, drink, shop, work, or whatever. In my case, I was the queen of distracting myself and pretending that everything was okay while I would eat myself sick. You see, I was eating my words and that was my habit since I was a little girl. And after decades, decades of gaining and losing more weight than I can count and knowing what living within obesity is all about, I've lost weight and I keep it off. Now, I've come to respect and appreciate my lifelong experience with comfort eating and yo-yo dieting because it was my way to fight to stay calm and it was my way to fight to just stay alive. At least I wasn't hurting others and it was a way for me to keep things together as best I could until I figured out things for myself. Did you know that emotional eating is the number one cause of obesity? This is according to heartmath.com, and as one who ate emotionally as a lifelong habit, once I learned how to respond to my challenging emotions differently, I started to heal my emotional eating, which was how I was able to lose weight and keep it off. So in this podcast, I'm sharing tools, tips, and information to educate, support, and inspire you. You are so special and amazing that to lose yourself through eating is simply unacceptable. Simply unacceptable. You deserve to be healthy and you deserve to feel vibrant, happy, and on fire about your life. On fire about your life. So feel free to dive right in to explore the tools I share about freeing yourself from emotional and comfort eating. I invite you to listen to episodes one through 10 
and beyond, actually. The fundamentals are in episodes one through 10. And from there, we're continuing to explore these fundamentals in different ways. And if you're interested in hearing my story and how I backed into healing my emotional eating and losing weight that I still keep off today, I invite you to listen to episode 11, which is entitled Freedom Through Focus. So with that, let's go underground and heal for real. Today's topic is one that I would have avoided listening to like the plague. The last thing I ever wanted to do was talk about my body or really even think about my body or call any attention at all to my body. You see, my body was a source of pain for me. I experienced sexual violation as a child And my goodness, I mean, there are real implications to that. I am still seeing how those experiences impact me and how my desire to be invisible still crops up from time to time. As long as I can remember, the most important thing for me to do was to try to stay safe, which is common for all of us, really. The whole point is to survive. Every organism fights for life. And in my desire to stay safe and fight for my life, because of the sexual violations, I felt that my own body was a threat to my well being. I dissociated from my body for decades and decades. And yeah, that's plural decades and decades. True statement. So as I look back on my actions and decisions, they all revolved around trying to feel safe. By the time I was seven years old, I wanted to disappear into the woodwork because I wanted to feel safe. I wanted to excel in school because if I got the praise, that meant that I would get the love. And if I got the love, then I would feel safe. Emotional eating, comfort eating, binge eating, and sneak eating were ways for me to feel comforted. And when I felt comforted, I felt safe. So it was all about safety for me, the things I would do to feel safe. And my lifelong quest to lose weight was all about trying to feel lovable and feeling worthy enough to be loved so that I would still feel safe. And yet when I lost weight, I felt vulnerable. I would get attention from boys when I lost weight and that felt very threatening to me. So I would put back on the weight to feel safe, safe, but miserable at the same time. So fast forward to my learning how to make peace with myself, with the tools I share here. I cultivated my sense of safety within my inner world and I worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it some more. That was my focus and it sure was paying off. I was feeling better and lighter on the inside. And as time went on, I ultimately decided that I wanted my body to reflect how good I felt on the inside. So I started to move my body. I took walks. I would do some light impact workouts at home with some workout videos. And that's kind of how I started after I got that initial spark to change my life. And one of the things I appreciate about myself is that I'm curious. I'm open-minded and curious about pretty much everything. So you know how when you tell a child, don't touch the stove because it's hot? Well, when I was younger, I actually did touch a hot stove. I mean, the fire was not on, but I knew not to touch the stove, but I couldn't help myself. I I was curious. I wanted to know why not. And I burned my hand a little bit and I was like, oh, so that's why I shouldn't touch the stove. Duh. I mean, I've had my share of duh moments, doing things that I would have been better off just leaving alone. But I'm curious. I I really do want to know about things. I'm always asking why. And one day, a dear friend of mine invited me to a yoga class. This was probably about 15 years ago now. And, And I had never been to a yoga class before. Years before this, though, I'd read a book about yoga You see, besides eating, reading was my lifeline. It felt safe for me to disappear into a book. I could be alone. And while my body was mostly inactive while I was reading, I could let my imagination run free. And that's when I felt safest and happiest, really. 
So from reading and looking at pictures in the yoga book, I was slightly familiar with some of the yoga poses. I really admired the sleek and toned bodies of folks who practiced yoga, and I admired what they were able to do with their bodies. And I wanted to have a svelte body like the folks in the yoga book, and I was curious. And I loved spending time with my friends, so I said, sure, I'll go to the class with you, no problem. So I went to the yoga class with her, and let me tell you, reading about yoga and doing it are two different things. But you know, learning about anything conceptually and then actually doing it physically are two different things. Reading about how to use a hammer and a nail and then actually holding a hammer, which can feel somewhat heavy, and then taking a nail, which is small and sharp, and then pounding the nail with the hammer and watching the nail disappear into a piece of wood is completely different than reading about it. So here I am, the curious one, feeling somewhat prepared for this new experience, entering a yoga studio with my friend. And of course, the first thing I notice is that I'm the biggest person in the room. And I was the only one out of shape. Great. Perfect. Anyway, I brought a towel and my friend let me use one of her yoga mats and I followed her around. I put away my purse. I took off my shoes and socks. I rolled out the, the mat next to hers and was ready to go. So I was looking the part, you know, I was doing just fine. And let me tell you, in the beginning, we were sitting cross-legged with eyes closed and sitting cross-legged has always been very uncomfortable for me physically. I mean, it's just how I'm built, I guess. So within five minutes of the class, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this isn't for me at all. And not even two minutes after that, As I'm watching what my friend is doing and I'm trying my best to follow the directions from the instructor as far as the poses go, well, let me see if I can explain this properly, okay? In my head, while doing the poses or trying to do the poses, I am dying. I am dying. I'm trying to fit into what they're doing in the class, but on the inside, I am dying, I am beside myself. I'm saying all kinds of stuff in my head. I'm calling the instructor all kinds of a-holes and MFs. I'm like, you damn effing MF. This is effing MFing shit. Oops. I'll just say shh. And I'm calling my friend all kinds of bitches and cussing at myself like, Janet, what the F were you thinking when you said yes to this shit? And then I get this flight response. I find myself looking at the door and I'm thinking, there's the door. Just walk out. You don't have to stay here. You don't even have to get your purse. Just leave it. Just walk out. And let me tell you, a door never looked so good or appealing in all my life. But I didn't walk out because I didn't want to disrupt the class or worry my friends. So I just stayed there in that effing class and I finished it. But I was literally cussing out everybody and everything in my head the entire time. So once the class ended over an hour later and we're all just drenched in sweat and my friend smiles at me and she asks, well, how did you like it? And I said, oh, I liked it just fine. Thanks for inviting me. So yeah, reading about something and doing it are two totally different things. And do you know that a month or so later, my friend invited me back to the class because I didn't have the, I, I wasn't honest with her to tell her it sucked. Anyway, she invited me back to the class. And do you know that I went? Now, here's why I went. I don't like the idea of being beat by anything, if that makes sense. It's like wrestling with eating all my life. One of the things that always bothered me about it, not just the weight gain or feeling awkward and unlovable, I didn't like the feeling of being out of control with it. Food had master control over me and I didn't like it. 
and I'm competitive. My family life was competitive. My brothers played football, baseball, and basketball, and I knew all the rules to those games. I watched a lot of sports with my dad and my brothers, and our dad taught us card games and board games, and we played them a lot. I mean, a lot. We're like super competitive. My dad even taught us how to play poker, and he'd win back our allowance money. True story. So you see, I don't like the feeling of being beat by anything. I didn't like the idea of being beat down by food. And I certainly wasn't going to be beat down by a stupid yoga class. So yeah, I went again just so I could say, yeah, I beat it. Yeah, I beat it. Anyway, and literally the moment we walked into that yoga class, I was cussing myself totally out. Janet, have you completely lost your mind? What the F were you thinking? You weren't thinking. That's the problem. And here you are again. What is wrong with you? And then I proceeded to cuss out everybody and myself in my head the entire time. I got that flight response again and totally yelled at myself to get out of there this time. But again, I didn't. I stayed and I finished the class. And then I learned my lesson. I was like, that was it for me. And I didn't go back again. Now, in retrospect, it felt like it was so difficult for me. I mean, the poses are challenging and certainly slimming and trimming and strength building, but I was still so cut off from my body. Of all the inner healing work I had done and feeling good and comfortable within myself, And even though I was in my losing weight mode and moving my body mode, this yoga thing showed me my wall with myself. I couldn't be still and I couldn't connect with my body. I still wasn't listening to it. And that's okay. I mean, it just wasn't for me. So for years, I continued to do my thing. I still went to work. I was still, you know, playing mom. I was still listening to my thoughts without judgment. And I continued to neutralize events. And I continued to safely release emotion. And I continued to write and think and work out old stuff and and be a loving friend to myself. And a couple of years ago, just a couple of years ago, a colleague told me about a yoga class she had gone to after work, which was right down the street from the office. And it sparked my attention just a little bit. Now, a dozen years had passed since my previous non-preferred experience with yoga and with my competitive nature still intact, I considered going just to gauge for myself if I had changed at all. So I thought about it off and on for a few weeks and then I decided what the heck I'm going to do it. I asked my friend which class and instructor she recommended and I went by myself to a class. And sure enough, sitting cross-legged was nearly impossible for me. And I was like, F, F, here we go again. I was cussing out the instructor in my head and I was yelling at myself for doing this effing shh again. But the flight feeling didn't happen like it did before. And although I felt really uncomfortable in the class, I did better than I had done before. I mean, There was a fleeting moment or two when I wasn't cussing everybody out. And for me, that was a miracle. So I felt good about it. I I felt like I didn't, I felt like it didn't get the best of me like it had a dozen years ago. And over the next couple of weeks, I went two more times and the cussing in my head was still there, but it was less. It was still curiously uncomfortable to be in there doing it, but it was strangely okay. So on my fourth visit to this damn yoga class, it was still very challenging and strenuous for me, and I was still cussing in my head, but less. And at the end of the class, while quietly laying on my back like everyone else, with eyes closed, I felt a keen sense of accomplishment for having gotten through the class, you know, relatively okay. And then in my mind's eye, all of a sudden, my attention somehow turned to my legs. They felt very tired and slightly beaten up from the, from the workout. And suddenly I had a series of flashbacks 
to all my years of yo-yo dieting and gaining and losing weight over and over again and how hard I had worked to get myself feeling better on the inside. And I thought about how my legs had hung in there with me the whole time. And for the first time, I realized how strong they were. I mean, they had hung in there with me all those years through thick and thin, through all my stuff. And I felt this overwhelming sense of gratitude for my legs. And I just lost it. I laid there quietly with tears just flowing and flowing and flowing. And as the class ended, I got up quickly. I kept my head down and I picked up my stuff and I headed for the bathroom. And I went into a bathroom stall and I just cried my eyes out. It was so overwhelming. After a lifetime of being disconnected from my body, after a lifetime of feeling like my body had betrayed me, I had my first true experience of feeling connected with and having utter and complete appreciation for my body. Through my treacherous experience with yoga, I finally broke through the wall I had put up between myself and my body. So that began a totally new journey for me, acknowledging and learning to appreciate my body. And as I continue to explore my relationship with my body, like I mentioned in a previous episode, my body kind of reminds me of being like a dog in a way. I mean, dogs can be just loving. It's like if you yell at a dog and then leave the room, as soon as you come back in, they're wagging their tail and just so excited to see you and just in love with you like nothing happened. They're always there in the moment. They're your buddy. It's like they're just down with you, whatever you do or don't do. And I get a real keen sense of this with my body. My body is my buddy. It's down with me, whatever I do or don't do. It responds and reacts to however I treat it. And it makes adjustments to ensure its own survival. And I so appreciate it for its own intelligence and I continue to do my best to nourish it wisely now that I have that connection again, and I'm not perfect with it by any means, and I don't have to be. This is a lifelong relationship, and I'm still learning and growing with it, um, as always. I've come to recognize one surprising benefit by becoming a friend to myself and lightening up on the inside before trying to lighten up on the outside. And it really showed me the progress that I had made internally. With my more recent yoga experience, I wasn't focused on comparing myself to other people in the class. That had morphed into me focusing on myself and my own intentions for my physical health and well-being. And that was really a revelation for me. You see, because every time I'd gone into any type of group exercise class, I would feel self-conscious and compare myself to other people. I'll tell you, my inner critic would use anything to show me that I didn't measure up. And this shifted as I learned to acknowledge, accept, and appreciate myself. And I naturally started to remain focused, remain focused on myself and honor where my body was. I didn't try to keep up with other people. I was pushing myself, but not in a disconnected way by trying to force my body to do something it couldn't really do comfortably. And I wasn't preoccupied with how others looked anymore. In fact, my constant comparing transformed into appreciating other people's bodies and using them as my inspiration. I would think, wow, look what I have to look forward to. This is going to be great. And you know what? It's already great. I'm here. It's great. So where I am in my journey right now is that I practice yoga pretty much every day. I didn't start this immediately after my breakthrough as I've done different exercise programs and I mix and match them based upon how I'm feeling or what I want to work on. 
And among other things, I've done like 30 day, 45 day and 90 day weight loss exercise programs, cardio workouts, you know, this is all throughout the years, some weight training, you know, walking, swimming, a lot of dancing and, 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 and other things. And now I'm practicing yoga at home. Even if I just breathe in and out a couple times while taking a pose, if I'm in a hurry, sometimes it's not, you know, a 30 minute workout or whatever. Sometimes it's really quick and I got to go. I found a wonderful online yoga teacher who has a wide variety of videos and 30 day programs and other things. Her website or her YouTube channel is called Yoga with Adrienne. And I really like her low key approach and her kind and fun energy. Like, for example, she's got this one 14 minute video called yoga for digestion, like when you eat too much, which I've used that I really enjoy. And like I said, I mean, she could be really funny too. So this is what I'm doing right now. And Lord knows that can change. And if you're thinking about getting your body moving, please consult your healthcare professionals and take things at your own pace, honor your body and also have fun with it. And I invite you to consider acknowledging your body. I invite you to consider appreciating your body exactly as it is right now. Thank it for being your buddy. Acknowledge it for hanging in there with you through thick and thin while you figure things out for yourself. And in your journey to reconnect with your body, I invite you to think about one thing that you appreciate about your body. Perhaps you can feel gratitude when you wiggle your toes, or you can thank your ability to listen to what we're talking about today. I'm talking about basic, simple, easy stuff. If you can see, appreciate the fact that you have vision, find something, anything you can summon appreciation for with your body. So ask yourself, how can you thank your body today? If you have children, you can thank your arms for being able to give them hugs. Find something, anything, no matter how small it might be, to thank your body for. Anything small that you can thank your body for is a really, really big deal. And I honor you for your willingness to explore your gratitude for it today. This, that's some really big stuff. Just one thing, find something you appreciate, no matter how small And finally, if you're feeling really weighted down, here's something that you might find useful that I certainly did as I learned to acknowledge and embrace exactly where I was with my weight and in anticipation of the future that I knew that I would create. Consider that one of the ways that your excess weight serves you is that it's stored energy. Just think, As you start feeling better about yourself, you have lots of energy that's there and it's there ready for you to use. Remember that your body is your buddy. Remember that your body is your faithful companion. Whatever you decide to do with it, it is right there with you. Your wish is its command. And if you decide to start getting your body moving, Consider doing it from a place of joy and excitement. Consider doing it out of appreciation for your body or for the endless benefits that you're going to experience in your body when you do it right now. And in your state of excitement, keep visualizing and anticipating how good you're going to feel as you stick with it and do it just today. That's all you have is just today and do something toward that dream just today. You know, this is a wonderful lifelong relationship with your body and the journey to reconnect with it can be astounding and nothing short of amazing. And I send all my love and support to you as you explore this in your own unique way. Your time is precious, and I'm so honored that you've joined me today. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to drop me a line at support at JanetDThomas.com. There are also more resources available on my website at JanetDThomas.com. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Being happy first is a wonderful foundation on which to lose weight. 
Also remember that your value has nothing to do with the number on the scale. You are valuable exactly as you are and you're doing just fine. But if you're already on your weight loss journey, if that's what you want to do, remember why you're doing it. Keep your dream front and center and let it be strong enough and big enough and real enough to keep you making excellent, nutritious, and life-affirming choices today. And finally, please consider leaving an honest review of this podcast on iTunes. Your review might help someone else decide to listen to it for some love and support. So thank you in advance for being kind to your body this week. And I'll see you next time. I'm learning to love myself. Janet's here to help. She's just a click away. Go to JanetDThomas.com and stay on your journey today.